Now, where, what's going on here? So we've got, this is a famous chart. Most of you have probably seen this. A study done by John Miller at Michigan State University. Get, country by country, not all countries are here, but it's very representative. Did human beings, as we know them, develop from an earlier species of animals? If you say yes, you, evolution is convincing to you. If you say no, then it's not. And then there's a white area in between if you're not sure. So this is a ranking of some level of science literacy. Iceland, Denmark, Sweden, France, all at the top. The United States is way at the bottom there, just one notch above Turkey. So I want to show you a couple of things, just to, so there's hope in the world. Right there is Britain. Britain birthed the Anglican Church, right? King Henry VIII, separated from Rome. And so that, at the time, was, you might think of a quite religious community. They're very high in this uh, evolution support. Another sort of, uh, was it Martin Luther in Germany? You just look at sort of religious movements, and these countries have certainly come out of them. Uh, you've got Italy, the seat of the papacy, and the uh, Catholic Church. And uh, here we have some uh, Eastern Bloc countries, uh, Slovenia, Czech Republic, Estonia. They, that's interesting because they were sort of communist and you're not supposed to have religion. You'd think maybe they'd be really high on this list, but they're not, as though the suppressed religion had to then manifest itself at the end of the Soviet Empire. And there's the United States uh, down at the bottom. Hard to understand this, to be frank with you. Uh, back in my home institution in New York, the American Museum of Natural History, the Hayden Planetarium, we have a Big Bang exhibit right there. It's the belly of a huge sphere. The upper half is the planetarium. The lower half is a, big, a recreation of the Big Bang. You sign a release before you go in because uh, it's dangerous. Uh, but people come up, they come in and out of the Big Bang, and they say, how come you made no mention of God? A couple of people. Not, it's not every day. It's not every day, but they, we get that every now and then. You know what I do? I don't even have that conversation. I say... Why don't you go to the Hall of Human Biology and check out what's there first, then come back? So they go there. Oh, sorry, I have a picture of the Big Bang. This is an art. It's too dark in there to get an actual photo, but that's kind of what that experience looks like. So I send them to the Hall of Human Biology and Human Evolution, and they're confronted with pictures like this, like, you know, orangutan holding hands with a human being and they never make it back to the Big Bang. I never see them again, the people I send them. So it's clear to me that this fact is far more devastating to their sort of worldview than the Big Bang itself. And it might be that the Big Bang was a beginning, like in Genesis, and this, they just can't even wrap their head around it. So historically, the resistance to science in America has surrounded this. Darwinian evolution more than it has surrounded any advance that we can present in astrophysics. And uh, this, th this is my most viewed YouTube clip. It's like 90 seconds long. I'm gonna play, you probably have all seen this clip. You must have, because it's got 1.4 million views. Um, but this is my first ever encounter with Richard Dawkins. This is a 2006. I am nervous, because I've read all his books. And I'm a big fan of his, and I'm jealous that he has perfect British sentences coming out of his mouth, and I don't, okay? It's an American complex. You, don't, you guys sound sort of British, all right? We, we don't sound British at all. And so, we, so I, I confront him on his tactics, and so I will play this for you. Oops, that's my Twitter page. Okay, here we go. I think the sound is live. I can have okay. one last comment on, on, on Richard Dawkins. It'll be yeah. quick. Um, <clears throat> oh, by the way, I am so nervous because, like, it's Richard Dawkins, right? I am completely inarticulate in this clip. <laughs> I am more articulate than I have ever been since I was a toddler, all right? Just watch me stumble on my words. I was in the back row as you spoke. Um, and so I could see sort of the whole room as the words came out of your mouth <laughs> as beautifully as they always do and as articulately as they always do. And 
Let me just say, your commentary had a sharpness of teeth that I had not even projected for you. Uh, it was it's more, more, I had, a, it was my first time meeting uh, 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 medium, and so, and I, and, and so I felt you more than I heard you. And I asked the question, um, and this gets back a little to what Francisco was getting at. You're a professor of the public understanding of science, not professor of delivering truth to the public. And these are two different exercises. One of them is you put the truth out there, and like you said, they either buy your book or they don't. Well, that's not being an educator. That's just putting it out there. Being an educator is, part, is not only getting the truth right, but there's got to be an act of persuasion in there as well. Persuasion isn't always, here's the facts, you're either an idiot or you're not. It's, it's here are the facts, and here, is, and here is a sensitivity to your state of mind, and it's the facts plus the sensitivity, when convolved together, creates impact. And I worry that your, your methods and your, your, your how, how, how articulately barbed you can be ends up simply being ineffective yeah. when, when you have much more power of influence than what is currently reflected in your output. I agree. Okay. So, so that whole room is complete uh, Dawkins fan base, and I just diss their dude, all right? So, so there's, a, there's a very awkward silence immediately after this, because everyone is saying, oh, shit. What's he gonna say now, okay? So, so it was a very tense moment. And then Dawkins replies. Hang on, let me back it up a half a second. Okay, here we go. I accept the rebuke. Um. <laughs> sorry, 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 here, here. Um, Of influence than what is currently reflected in your output. I gratefully accept the rebuke. Um, <laughs> um, I, just just one, one anecdote to show that I'm not the worst in this thing. Um, a, um, a former and highly successful editor of New Scientist magazine, who actually built up New Scientist to great new heights, was asked, what is your philosophy at New Scientist? And he said, our philosophy at New Scientist is this. Science is interesting, and if you don't agree, you can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so there's someone worse than Dawkins out there, apparently. It is. Gotta love the guy. <laughs>